So hello, hello, Rong. Um, how are you doing? I'm I'm do I'm keeping well. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very excited to get to talk to you because you're in one of my favorite shows of the moment, which is uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Oh, and great. Um, we we at Small Screen have been absolutely loving it. Uh, I am I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm not the Star Trek nerd in 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 the team. That is very much James. Okay. Um, which is James was desperate to get to talk to you, but unfortunately he can't be with us today. Oh. But um, I I do have a pretty extensive background in Star Trek. But one of the things I I did want to ask you about about mm -hmm. this is um, how how did it happen for you? How did the casting process happen? Because we ask this to most people that we we interview. We're always very interested in that sort of thing. Um, well, it happened in a pretty straightforward manner. Uh, I got yeah. an audition from my agent uh, early 2021, but all the years are jumbled in my head now. Um, and yeah, and I, and I was very excited when I got the audition because uh, I, you know, I, I would consider myself more of a new Trek fan because uh, mm. I, I didn't necessarily grow up with it. Um, but I was very excited. Uh, that there was a new Star Trek filming in Toronto and I really wanted to be in it. So when I got the audition, I was over the moon and it was a, a, it was a simple Zoom audition. They gave me um, size for Jenna and mm. um, it was like a pretty straightforward scene with uh, Captain Pike and, um, and yeah, and it was a, a Zoom audition with a casting director. And then the next day I got a call saying that they were interested and if I would be available. And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> So you, you mentioned Captain Pike, um, played by Anson Mount in, mm -hmm. in, in the series. Um, what's it like getting to act alongside um, Anson and that and, hair? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> his hair has really taken off. And it's, it really has well, done. Well, yeah. It was interesting because we were filming season two and we're seeing all the tweets come out about his hair and all of the, 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 <laughs> the memes. And I remember sitting sitting across from him one day and I was looking at the hair and I was like, wow. Yeah, that it really is something. Uh, I was in the uh, make uh, hair trailer with him, and I was seeing uh, uh, Daniel, our head of hair, work on his his hair and how like meticulously he was kind of sculpting it upwards. It's it's, it's quite incredible. But <laughs> Anson, uh, the actor, is just phenomenal. I I love having the chance to kind of be up and close and seeing his work because he's just so good um and he's he has so much ease with his work too that it's um it's it's, it's really it's really fun to watch and, and to see his work up up close because he's he's so good yeah I mean it does come it comes across both both of you have a very good dynamic in the show um and that's it's interesting that they got you to to do lines to, alongside Kirk in in the casting process um, one of one of the things I think that a lot of people that watch the show, um, it comes it comes across as this is a show that's made for Star Trek fans by Star Trek fans. Mm -hmm. And is is that something that that was coming across when you were filming? Yeah, absolutely. There's so much passion for the show from the crew to the actors. Um, Henry Alonso Myers is like a huge Star Trek fan himself, and mm. you can really see all of the uh, the thought put behind it, and and the writers as well, from the writers, directors, like everyone on every level of the show, um, just brings so much passion and joy to the work. And I think that's mm. what shows on camera, and and I think that's what fans are responding to, which is so exciting. No, it really, it really does show. Like the, the the mere fact I mentioned James a lot in this um, is because someone like him, that's a massive Star Trek fan, really loves this show, and it hasn't really been the case with a lot of Star Trek shows recently. Um, even though personally I've been enjoying them, but again, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm a relatively new Star Trek fan. Me too. Like <laughs> so for me, my my was was the uh, was it the J.J. Abrams films that that were the first Star Trek things that you watched? They were, yeah. Yeah, um... me too. Those films came out, and I became suddenly more interested in Star Trek. And uh, and my friend Mickey and I, at the time, we decided to start a blog as a result of really? it because we liked a lot of the same things. We like we love Marvel. We love a lot of the same animes. Like we share so many similar fandoms that we were like, Star Trek is one that we never uh, touched before. Um, and so we try to start. We try to start a blog called Watching Star Trek, and the I, whole idea was to cro like um, chronicle every episode of Star Trek from the beginning to the end. Uh, wow! We didn't get very far, but we tried. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's kind of like me with small screen. That's why I started small screen was because um, I love talking about Marvel, DC, Star Trek, Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And as a journalist, you don't get to talk about it that much unless you just don't want to get paid. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah it's, turned, it's turned out pretty well, but that's really cool. So what was, is it still up the size or is it, is it defunct? <gasps> Oh, I have no idea. Uh, oh. I think I think Mickey started the account. It was like a WordPress yeah. blog. I, I I I haven't checked to see if it's still <laughs> online. <laughs> you should do. It might it might do really well now. Now that you're actually in the show, you can give yeah, some now uh, I have interesting to kind stories. Of pick it up again. Although I I, I I I'm not sure if I want to see what I wrote, whatever I wrote like <laughs> eight years ago. <laughs> and you you mentioned it, it films in Toronto. So are you are you you are from Toronto? Is that right? Or you, yeah, are you I'm from based the area? in Toronto. Yeah. Well, yeah. What's it like getting to, to film uh, in Toronto? There are a lot of TV shows filming there at the moment. Uh, what, what's it, is it? Is it a fun place to film? To me, yes. it seems like a magical place very far away. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that magical. It actually, um, the CBS studio is in Mississauga, which is um, part of the greater Toronto area. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's about like half an hour out of the city. Um, it's, a, it's a huge lot, uh, very close to the airport. So, so when you drive in, it, it doesn't really look like much. It just looks kind of like a bit of like a, like a warehouse uh, yeah. in the yeah. middle of nowhere. Um, yeah. But it's nice. It's, it's, I love being able to work and be, in, uh, be at home and be in a city that mm. I love. Um, yeah. Can, can you tell it? You mentioned that season two is, was filming. Has it finished filming? Have you finished filming now? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. they uh, the production wrapped on uh, last month. Okay, yeah, and so is, would... is there anything you can tell us about season two specifically with your character? I'm being cheeky now, aren't I? <laughs> I know. I, I'm I'm very scared to go into spoiler territory. Yes. I mean, she's in it. That's all I can say. Yeah, she's in it. <laughs> she's in uh, it. I, I, I do. I do. I often ask people that question, knowing that they're not going to be able to say much. But a lot <laughs> often, people I do ask, like, what What would you like to see happen to your character moving forward? So you can kind of give like a, oh, yeah. a, a bit of <laughs> a bit of a vague answer. But no, I, I, I completely, I completely get that. Um, so, well, you mentioned that you were you're kind of a new a new Star Trek fan. Although, to be honest, for a new Star Trek fan, starting a blog that's pretty hardcore. <laughs> I think. <laughs> But, well, um, we thought that was the only way that we can keep ourselves accountable to really watch every episode. But then yeah, I just true. binged too far ahead to go back and actually yeah, cover the you episodes. Got, you got too into it. I thought that's, yeah. that's what happens. Yeah. But is who would you say is your favorite Star Trek character of all time, apart from Jenna, of course? Uh, uh, I think my favorite uh, Star Trek character of all time. I, I mean, I love Sulu. I think yes. Sulu is great. Um, I love Spock uh, specifically. I really love uh, Ethan Spock because I think his, mm. his his characterization of him as young Spock is really awesome. And uh, and yeah, and and like pretty much everyone on Strange New Worlds, I, I love them. Uh, they're 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 really, it's just, it's just a really fun show. But uh, I would say Sulu is definitely one of my like top, I guess, legacy characters. Yeah. Uh, that's a very good choice. Sulu is a great mm -hmm. choice. My, I think mine has is always been a Spock. I find Spock fascinating. Yeah. It's a fascinating character. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's it's cool to get to see him in Strange New Worlds as well. That's it's um it's something that, I mean, to be honest, I wasn't I I didn't know much about the show before watching it, and when I was when I was watching, I was like, this is this the idea is like kind of insane and. Um, I'm really glad that that it's that it's happened that it's ended up being so good. Oh yeah. Because there have been there have been shows recently that haven't quite hit the mark, but I think Strange New Worlds is the one that's really got it spot on. Oh, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, I I, I agree. As a as a fan of the show, I'm also like it's it's so crazy to be in the show that I'm also a fan of. Um, I think that's, yeah, that must that's be. been really really fun and very gratifying and kind of exciting. Another show that you that you're in uh, that I I've actually I've watched I haven't because I'm in France I haven't been able to watch every episode but it's a show called Hello Again. Oh which, yes. Um, and I just wanted to get to talk to you a little bit about that as well because um, it, this show is like it's funny, heartbreaking, very it, to me you know relationships are difficult, uh, but I think this this show gets it. Sp again spot on they, they really do a very good job with it can you talk a little bit about about how that started and how the idea came about um well like same thing like it was an audition for the role of yeah. Avery and um right from the get-go I was really interested in the project um 
seeing that it was uh, uh, created by Simu, um, Simu Liu, and yeah. uh, and uh, co-created by uh, Natalie Younglai, who is uh, a wonderful writer uh, who I've looked up to for a long time. And uh, I remember reading the the audition sides uh, in the in the first episode, and I was like, "This is a great. This mm. sounds like a really great project. It's a modern love story. It features." Um, you know, and, and uh, like, a, and uh, it, sorry, it's a, it's a modern love stories that, that, that features kind of um, uh, uh, Asian people and BIPOC people at the forefront, um, but done in a way that's, it's not necessarily about race. It's just about mm. love. Um, mm. And I, and I really liked it. And, uh, and so I was very happy when I got the role and we initially shot a, a teaser for it um, during the, pandemic uh in 2020 and uh i remember it was a crazy day because we're shooting just snippets of it to cut together a teaser so we can get more funding to get the project fully funded to go in the following year and we were filming uh at the broadview hotel or that was where our base was and it was also the same day that a close friend of mine was having her wedding mm -hmm. that i thought i couldn't go to because i was filming until i showed up on site and i was like wait this is where her wedding's happening <laughs> so wow, right after good. we wrapped i just popped upstairs and you know <laughs> wished her you know a happy wedding and, and stayed for a bit and then the next day i had to fly out to uh newfoundland for another show so it was kind mm -hmm. of like this real like whirlwind of uh, 24 hours and then we shot the entire series the following year in the course of five days which was wow. absolutely bonkers we were filming like 20 up to 20 pages a day which was a lot That's um a lot. but it was so much fun uh you know alex malari jr is a great uh uh co-star and uh he's he's so fun to work with and we had a lot mm. of uh Fun working together and our director uh, Melanie was also gave us a lot of creative reign over over uh, and, and trust over what we wanted to do so yeah it was a really fun project to kind of throw up uh, under a, an incredibly short amount of time <laughs> uh, it's honestly it's really it's it's really something and um, I, I when when um, James was telling me that we're going to get to talk to you I was very excited because this this show is very special and I would love more people to watch it. I, it's really difficult to get a hold of outside of Canada, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe they're working on on distribution, like international yeah. distribution uh, elsewhere. I, I don't know where they are exactly on that, but hopefully mm. soon that uh, will be like, more people around the world can watch the show. Yeah. And is, is there a season two coming? Uh, I don't believe so. No, so it's uh, just... it is it is a self-contained series. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's plans to kind of expand it or not. Hmm. I hope it... so, and I hope to be in it still. Yeah, it would be yeah. great. I mean, there, there is some scope, some story mm -hmm. uh, that you can, that you can. I'm pretty sure you can come up with. But <laughs> it's actually it's it's interesting. Like there, there seems to be a lot of really good. You mentioned Simu Liu. There was, of course, originally from Kim's Convenience. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it seems to be a lot of really good, um, well, I hate the word, but content. I'm not, I, I really don't like that word, but like <laughs> art. Let's call it art. Art, yeah. <laughs> the, God, that's, that sounds very pretentious <laughs> to me. But that's, that's coming out of Canada specifically that's, that's actually focusing on, on minorities. And, um, yeah, I, you know, I mentioned Hello Again and Kim's Convenience, but also, I mean, Strange New Worlds, uh, Star Trek is something that's done that for, for years. Mm -hmm. But is that something you're seeing that's really focused specifically on Canada? Um, I think um, Canadian creatives right now definitely feels like there's a huge rush and demand for, mm. um, for content uh, from uh, diverse creators. You know, I think another show that's a really great example of that would be Sort Of. Um, yes. Uh, by Bilal Bag, and uh, it's, so it's a wonderful show that features like kind of all Canadian talent, but it showcases diversity in, in ways beyond uh, just race, but also into yeah. uh, gender and gender identity and sexuality. Um, but I think that's just you know I think we're catching up in responding to demands from the audience. You know I think. Mm. Um, a lot of that demand is coming from audiences who want to see their stories reflected on uh, in the media. And it's great that networks are finally, uh, you know, picking that up, you know, picking up yeah. the signal and and um, and uh, creating space for uh, 
you know, diverse and emerging and young creatives to step up and tell their stories. You, you really get that sense, especially, if, I don't know why, but especially from Canada is that there's a lot of stuff that's coming out of Canada that is promoting diversity. Yeah. And it's it's really good to, to see, but also some incredible stuff's coming out mm-hmm. um, and uh, and telling different stories, uh, which I, I love to see. I've always felt a bit of a, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, uh, I, I can't, I'm a white man, so I can't really talk about this, but I am a Brit that's grown up in France. So I always felt a bit like weird. <laughs> <That was great. laughs> but um, no, one of, one of the other things I saw that you worked on uh, was you did an episode of Working Mums, which is another yes. one of my favorite shows. Um, no way. I, yeah, also, I, you watch a lot of Canadian shows. <laughs> I do watch a lot. Of, it's weird. My wife and I t- seem to oddly watch Kim's Convenience, uh, Hello Again, and Working's, Working Mums are my <laughs> favorite shows this year. It's, wow. It's during lockdown. Um, yeah, so I was hoping you could talk a little bit about that. What, what was it like working on that show? Oh, it's was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, the, the, the ladies on that show are, are absolutely hilarious. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I just remember, yeah, it was it was a it was a fun set to to to, to step onto, and and I got a sense that you know everyone was, you know, enjoying enjoying their time, and uh, yeah, good. That was that was a while ago, so I'm trying to pull up my memory. So what that was yeah. like, yeah, I think I I think they gave I was I played a pregnant woman, so they gave yes. me like a fake prosthetic belly and I think that was the first time I ever wore like a fake pregnancy belly and I remember kind of like and they also gave me um I can't believe this is the only story I've been, but they also <laughs> gave me like a huge padded bras because they were like well you, you can't just have a big belly you also have to <laughs> show that your breasts are yeah, exactly. swollen from the pregnancy and I just remember looking at myself in the mirror being like oh so that's what I would look like if I'm ever pregnant <laughs> <laughs> it felt very accurate <laughs> Well, it's on a, yeah, I mean, I was looking at your INDB page and you've been in a lot of stuff, a, a lot of stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to see what you do next. I was going to ask you, is there anything that you, you would like to talk about that's coming out next? I did notice you've got a show. Um, let me get it up here. Is it, is it called uh, Sky Meds? Is that right? Oh, yeah, Sky Med. That yeah. actually just uh, dropped on Paramount Mount Plus, um, I think, 10 days ago. Okay. Was it? Yeah. So that just came out. And then um, I just shot a sh- an episode of a show called The Accused. It's an anthology series mm-hmm. on Fox that I believe is going to premiere next year. Um, but yeah, that was, a, that was a really cool episode to work on. Um, uh, the episode featured a storyline with, um, uh, with uh, deaf characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, the director was uh, Marley Maitland and she... Uh, is she was just incredible. She was um, she's she was a, it was wonderful to 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 work with her and to work with the entire team and the way that they integrated ASL into the show and on set uh, was just so well thought out and I really really enjoyed my time there. It was a wonderful set, wonderful crew, um, great cast, and I can't wait to see see that when that comes out. Great, and then you've, of course you got uh, Strange New World season two. As well. yes. <laughs> that's, that's gonna be, is that is that twenty twenty three? I I think so. Yeah, twenty twenty three. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, we all look forward to that. Thank you so much. Uh, I won't oh, take up any more of your time. I've taken up enough. But uh, oh. thank you so much for talking to us, Wrong. It's been it's been lovely. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks, Edward.